a senior foreign policy writer at Newsweek. He joins us now from Staten Island in New York. Good to have you back with us, Tom. As we heard there, the U.S. Treasury has now offered guidance on exactly where in Afghanistan this money can be transferred to. And it comes after Antonio Guterres, the chief of the U.N., basically warned that uh, Afghanistan was hanging by a thread and urged countries to resume the flow of funds to Afghanistan. What sort of a difference will this U.S. move make on the country? Well, I think certainly people who are concerned about the humanitarian Afghanistan, which is which is appalling at this moment, uh, would welcome this move because it, 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 the people of Afghanistan, I don't think, should be held hostage to foreign policy differences between Kabul and Washington. And, uh, and even if the U.S. does still have many disagreements, perhaps with the way the Taliban is choosing to, its, to rule its government, um, they are the undisputed government right now, and their fate and the fate of the Afghan people, in, in many ways, are in their hands. So it's hoped that this will help promote civil society things. Um, education, as you said, um, certain transactions, and, and even if they're limited in some ways to humanitarian purpose, that seems to be able to be uh, interpreted quite broadly to be able to support um, Afghan civil society as a whole. We know when the Taliban retook control of Afghanistan last August, governments and aid agencies around the world froze their funding uh, to Afghanistan, fearing that their money would fall into the hands of the Taliban. At what point will uh, the bulk of these agencies and countries reconsider that move? And does it need to happen now? Do they need to reconsider uh, refunding uh, the country? Well, as you said, and as the UN pointed out, the numbers are quite dire, with more than half of Afghans being uh, food insecure, um, uh, nearly 9 million risking uh, starvation, actually. So I think the sooner the better, of course, in terms of humanitarian needs. I think the U.S. decision uh, could prove a model for other countries to, to move forward. I think there was has always been a concern that any companies doing, or any businesses, or individuals even doing business in Afghanistan, could trigger U.S. sanctions. So I think certainly the U.S. stepping forward will, will hopefully prove a beacon for other countries to, to move forward as well. Governments and aid agencies have also warned the Taliban that they might consider uh, flowing funds back into the country if they ensure that the rights of women and girls are protected. Is it right to tie that funding to such conditions? Well, as I said, I think it's it's tough to say that the Afghan people as a whole should be hostage to those foreign policy decisions. Now, of course, there are legitimate concerns, but people can only people can only be concerned if the Afghan people can live and eat. And I think that's the primary concern here. I think it's the primary priority here, actually. And of course, you know, Afghanistan's economic issues aren't limited to just sanctions. You know, this is a country. It's it's a sparsely comp, uh, sparsely populated country. Um, there's remote regions, poor infrastructure. The Taliban is a is a is a government government that was a guerrilla force for two decades and doesn't necessarily have that statecrafting experience. But I think certainly this could help promote that international cooperation that would hopefully not only have economic benefits, but also have policy benefits to influence Afghanistan in the right direction. Okay, Tom O'Connor from Newsweek, always good to get your thoughts. Thank you so much again Thank for joining you. us.